to another episode of Withstanding the Storm. I am Storm Thomas. And I'm Lady Jan. And we thank you guys for tuning in to another week of Withstanding the Storm. Um, today we're going to talk a lot about progress. Uh, honestly, you'll notice I said thank you for joining us for another week, but we we missed a week. We did. We were not able to film the podcast. We were not able to sit down and talk like we want to, like we like to. Um, as, as you're aware, I'm sure you are, life happens. And as I've stated in previous episodes, we're currently in the process of moving and renovating uh, my house, our house. I say mine, I'm sorry. It's your childhood home, so I mean, right. it, it's always been your home. Right, so it'll it'll always be very special to me, but there there's just so much going on. My younger brother, who also lives in the same city that we're moving to, is currently going through renovations as well. And honestly, the entire week last week, we were over there every single night helping them paint, helping them move things, put new dressers together, new bed together, just doing all the things that you know family does that you help out and you you work together with your family. So um, that's one of the things we kind of wanted to talk about this week was was progress. Not perfection. Right. Not, not perfection, but striving for it. But also having the understanding that you're not going to be perfect every time. And even with the podcast, we're not perfect. We weren't perfect because we missed our first week. We probably will never be perfect, and we're totally okay with that. I'm accepting that perfection is not something I can have. That's one thing I learned during COVID. There's there's really no such thing as perfection. If you show me a perfect person, I'm going to show you a liar. Uh, I can probably show you a thief, a cheater, and all of the above. Perfection is a facade. It's something we can all strive for, but it's not something that's actually attainable. I tell that to my fitness clients, you know, you're going to want what the quote unquote perfect body, but it's not a real thing because everybody's bodies are so different. You can have the best body you can achieve, but by no means is it going to be perfect. Welcome to his storm talk. Yeah. Uh, a great example. I think you had a great example this week when you took the girls to the pool. So our kids are on spring break and in the, uh, afternoons we have been sneaking over to the YMCA that's near our house um, and I say sneaking over because there's like nobody there so I've been like real quiet about the fact that we go over there and it's like five o'clock and nobody's there it's really weird but I mean COVID's changed a lot of people's perspectives but um, girls haven't really been in a pool in a while and so you know the YMCA is very strict they have a swim touch you have to pass before you can be in their pools or go on the water slides or anything that's or, the biggest thing sorry to interrupt but that's the friends. biggest thing is the kids just love the water slides totally love it and if you don't pass the swim test you don't get to go on the water slides so our oldest daughter jumps in the water does the swim test pass flying colors youngest daughter jumps in the water slightly panics fails the swim test um, and kind of beats herself up really bad. And so uh, that first day she had the opportunity, she tried three times to pass the swim test and she failed every single time. Uh, and she was really sad about it, but she's a good sport and she understood, you know, she can't beat herself up. Um, and then the next time we went, she's pumping herself up the whole way there and we get there and she jumps in to do it and she makes it about halfway. And then she fails. Um, and she, she kind of disqualified herself a little bit, but she was like, oh man, so she gets sad again. And she's like, I can, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. And I was like, you seem very tired. And I would just don't know. And she's like, I'm gonna do, do it, mom. And she stops over there. She doesn't really stop, but you know, she's got a yes, bit she of a does. sassy she's, swagger to herself. She's just like you. She stopped right over there. That's she true. knew what she wanted to do and she was gonna go do but it. She's a Janna Jr. Um, and so she uh, storms over there and very politely says to the lifeguard, can I please try again? And we're like, okay, if you're sure about it. And she goes over, does it, and she's like 10 feet from finishing it. And she looks at me and I can tell she's gonna give up. I'm like, don't give up. And she just took a deep breath and she finished. And then I have never seen her cry. 
for joy. And I think it was a good lesson for her and for me because she's growing. She's, she's growing up. She's having to do things for herself. But she kept telling herself afterwards, she goes, I knew I could do it. I just had to believe in myself. And that's, that's the key thing. One of the things that you mentioned, I don't even think you realize, sometimes we all get ourselves in a position where we get a little overwhelmed. And it's very easy to just stop whatever you're doing. It's easy to quit. It's easy to give up and say, oh, I'll just give it another shot another day. But the key is the same thing that this nine-year-old child did that some of us adults struggle with is just take a deep breath, reevaluate your situation, and keep moving forward. And I remember she called me and because I was already at the gym and she called me and she's like, daddy, daddy, I passed the swim test. I did it. And I'd never heard her so excited. And it made me proud because, you know, it's one of those things you can't help them with the swim test. You can't, they don't even really want you coaching them along. So, you know, the fact that she was able to overcome that and teach us a lesson at the same time was outstanding. And and that's what life's all about because no no matter how much we strive for greatness, whether it's at our jobs, we want to get that next promotion, that next raise, become a, a vice president, a president, a CEO, whatever you know your goal is at your job. Don't forget to be happy with where you are. Uh, one of my one of my favorite quotes, uh, I think I originally heard it from Ashton Kutcher. He said, be happy but never be satisfied. And that's so you. That's that's a so that's a quote that I use a lot. It's a goal that I it's it's one of those things that I live by. But again, it's not to say that you shouldn't have goals because you should, but it also means be happy with where you are. You can even look at that backwards. Never be satisfied but don't forget to be happy. It's great to have goals, whether it's fitness goals, work goals, relationship goals. God knows we have our fair share of struggles in the relationship department. And if you don't, Lord. I don't believe you. No relationship <laughs> is perfect, guys. Ours is not. We've said it a million times. We're going to say it a million more. We have our own relationship goals. We have different struggles that we work on. I have to work very hard to be a little bit more accommodating with my time, to be a little bit more selfless. There's specific goals that you have that you're working on. And we need to continue to work on those goals, but we also can't forget to be happy with where we are as a couple in life and then strive to work towards those goals because I think that's the part that a lot of us forget to do is we forget to just be happy with the accomplishments we've made. Well, yes, but I also think that a lot of times people, and, and I'm guilty of this wholeheartedly, you attribute your happiness coming from others, like from your relationships, whether that be a significant other, that's your children, that's your parents, that's your, you know, be, your, your job, like you're taking happiness from somewhere else and you have to find that within yourself. And that's something that I know like the last year I've realized, I'm still trying to master that whole process. So that's a hard one to do. Um, but I also think that you have to find happiness within yourself. And then you also have to put yourself in situations where you know you're gonna be challenged because I, again, the last year has been very humbling for me but I have realized I don't put myself into situations I know I can fail at. I have only put myself in, in I've, I've taken the easier. I haven't had things handed to me per se, like no. I have in certain respects. I've had a lot of uh, privilege, if you will, in some respects, but if I didn't think I could succeed at it or get by, I wouldn't do it or I would quit early so that it wasn't a thing anymore and that's something that I'm trying really hard to break the habit of but then also teach our children to be okay with failure because that's not a failure if you keep trying failure is quitting and walking away and I've done that a lot in my life it seems yeah but again failing and quitting is one thing but failing and learning from that failure that's not 
true failure. That's learning. And that's how you grow. You know, pain is growth. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the famous National Treasure movie quote. Thomas Edison invented 100 or 99 ways to not make a light bulb. Yeah. But then one way to make it. And that's the thing is not giving up, not quitting, and keep pushing forward because those quote-unquote failures just set you up for the next success mm -hmm. you can't learn from something if you haven't failed you can't learn how to run unless you've walked you can't walk unless you've crawled and you can't crawl unless you've learned how to get up on your hands and knees and get the work done right well you then know. also like the regret of not trying to like you hear it all the time with people who are like oh mm -hmm. i regret that i didn't you know when something something when i was younger and uh I don't want to do I don't necessarily have a lot of regrets but I don't want to have that happen to me when I get older no you you shouldn't you know you shouldn't regret anything that you've done or anything that you haven't done you should just figure out how to not make those mistakes again I can I could be honest I could sit here and say I wish I would have started wrestling sooner but that opportunity was never presented to me until it was presented to me right I can look back now and say I'm 35 years old. Truthfully, how many major companies are going to be interested in hiring a 35-year-old, 10-year experienced wrestler that doesn't have the international experience, that doesn't have already 150,000 Twitter followers, or has already, quote-unquote, built that fame for themselves? Well, if you ask me, in my opinion, all of them, I may be biased. Right. But, but let's let's be honest. They're probably not going to want to hire a 35-year-old. I wish I would have started when I was you know, 18, 19, 20. Like some of these kids that live in Tampa have a wonderful opportunity because there's multiple schools around. Young kids are starting so much earlier. And I commend them and I applaud them for that. I wish I could have. But I'm also not going to sit here and dwell on the fact that I didn't. Right. I'm going to enjoy the process that I've gone through, I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna reflect on all the stories, all the accolades, and all the great times that I've had. I can't sit here and live in what if. You know, the, the minute you start dwelling on that what if, and well, I coulda, woulda, shoulda, that's that's time, that's energy, that's, you're, you're wasting that. What, uh, emotional currency that you emotional always talk about? Emotional currency. I wake up every single day and I tell myself that I have $100 of emotional currency. And now I have to plan my day out on how I spend or waste my emotional currency. And I'm not gonna waste it on things that don't matter. I'm not gonna waste it on the what ifs. I'm not gonna waste it on the news. I'm not gonna waste it on political conversations because that's my peace of mind. That's my sanity. And I'm not just going to give that away willy nilly. I'm not going to give it away for free. I, I refuse. And I, I encourage you, anyone who's listening thus far, set yourself up for success. Don't, don't bother getting in these Twitter feuds and these Facebook wars. You have an opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to share your opinion. But now you're inviting other people into their entitled opinion to comment on your entitled opinion, and it becomes an absolute shit show. I've, I, th this week alone, I've seen so much back and forth on Facebook, on Twitter, about this person said this that offended that group, and that group did this that offended another group. If it doesn't affect you, personally in your day-to-day -day life let that drama just slide right past don't take a five dollar bill of your emotional currency and invest it into something that's not going to grow it's it's not worth it i promise you you're not making progress at that point but again um you know another thing i wanted to talk about seems right we're on the, the topic of progress is I kind of wanted to give you guys an update because that's what this is. This is it's our this is our life, you know. We're we're talking about our lives. We're talking about our struggles. We're talking about our 
happiness, our sadness, but I, I want to talk about the good things that are going on. Like I said, we we're, we're helping my brother renovate his house. Yep. Their renovations are almost done. And I'm very happy to announce that our fence just got completed mm -hmm. at the house. Two brand new custom roll gates, all black vinyl coated chain link fence. It looks great. It's gonna look great when everything's really done. But the thing I'm most happy about is being able to help my parents move out. They just closed on their apartment. They just moved in this past weekend. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I was scared, especially, <laughs> especially because of my mom. Uh, for those of you who know my mom, my mom can be an absolute sweetheart or she could be an absolute lunatic. And I, I say that with, get heat. I say that with all due respect <laughs> and love for her because she raised me and I'm very, very similar to her. Like there's not a lot of, it's either one or the other with us. You're either going to get our best selves or our worst selves. And, and her and I, we, we butt heads like crazy because we both have very similar opinions and <laughs> we're not afraid to share with each other our thoughts. But I was, you know, I was worried. She's not really, she's not really the type that's used to um, change or new things. So I was really nervous about, you know, her leaving this, this home that her and my dad had built for the last 28 years and moving into a new apartment. You were really nice too. You didn't make any jokes being like, kicking you out of my house, get out. You, wow, you were really nervous, weren't you? Well, I've made plenty up till that point. And again, I didn't want to put salt in the wound. I didn't want to make it awkward. Again, you're moving from your, your house, your own property, your land to an apartment complex. Yep where now you have neighbors that are above you or below you or to the left of you or to the right of you. Mm -hmm. And I know that has to be nerve wracking for someone in their, in their early sixties. Mm -hmm. She's not used to having all those people around her. She's not used to hearing people go down the hallway, middle of the day, middle of the night. And I was really, really worried that the transition would not go smoothly, but you know, thank goodness we got all of their stuff moved and they did well enough on the sale of the house that um, I'm so proud to say that they were able to buy brand new bedroom furniture, living room furniture, which all got delivered the very next couple of days. And she said she had the best night's sleep she'd ever had in the apartment on the very first night that they stayed there. And that took so much weight off my chest because I've literally been holding this in that like my biggest fear is that her and my dad were going to come back and say hey look we can't do this we want to buy the house back <laughs> and like, like i could be a jerk but i would have to sell them the house back like i wouldn't have been able to live with myself if i would have said oh well, screw you you're on the streets right but i'm so happy i'm so happy that they settled in i'm I'm happy that they have this this really nice apartment complex. It's a few miles away from us. It's a few miles away from my brother. But she's got her own space again, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm I'm glad that that they did that. But that's that's a little bit more to speak on on the progress and the growth of a, of another human being who doesn't like change, who's not accustomed to new places or new surroundings, and against my belief she adjusted so well I've, I've talked to her every day on facetime just to check in see how the new place is going and she's like oh great well i met with this guy and they're gonna fix this you know the screen was there was a tear in the screen they got that fixed they're making friends with the maintenance department already thank god <laughs> you definitely want to be friends with my mother you do not want to be an enemy of my of my mother but the they're almost fully moved out of the house like they got all the clothes, they got all the stuff out of the kitchen. They're they're moved and they're settling in. And now now is the the transition for us where we're going to be renovating my childhood home and making it a completely different place. Yeah, we are. We're tearing it up apart from the ceiling to the floor. Uh, we're going to do a full remodel of the kitchen. We're going to do a f uh, redo the floors completely. The kitchen remodel is what I'm most excited for.
I feel like that's really going to change the entire dynamic of the house. Which is funny because, I mean, it will, but I don't know how much time you'll spend in the kitchen. Like, obviously, you eat a lot. Yeah. We still haven't ever addressed that. That's got to be a future podcast. Like, can we just follow me around one day and see everything that I make for you? Oh, yeah, we can yeah. do that. Um, make that a little clip. <laughs> a little clip? It's like 36 eggs a day. Yeah, but I'm not going to spend that much time. We'll just clip it. <laughs> Speak through me cracking eggs. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, like, I think, I think it'll be really cool. And I, I mean, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for future things. I'm excited for within however long it takes us that we get to convert the garage into a gym for you because you need it. That's, the, that's the long-term goal. I'm really hopeful that we can pull that off as well. We need to, cause I've already spent a lot of money buying weights for a squat rack I don't have yet. That's true. But, but. <laughs> We'll get there, but I mean, because honestly, like, I guess the biggest thing that I've also learned is like, uh, time is money, right? And money is time. And if we can build something at our home, that means we can come home, we can work out right there, the girls can work out if they want, like, there's no questions asked, you know, and we can just do it all right there, then why the heck not? Well, and, and again, you know, you, you, you spend this money and you invest it in you. If I, you know, was a swimmer, maybe I'd invested in a swimming pool. If I was interested in gardening, maybe I'd build a garden. But I, I love working out. Like it's, it's my stress relief, it's my sanity, it's, and again, it, it, all, it all stems back to when I was a kid. You know, I was never, ever in shape. I was always the chubby kid. I always got picked on. I always got bullied. And when I really found strength training and bodybuilding, whatever you want to call it, call it what you will, for me, I found my sanity and I found my, my belief and my purpose. And I really want to be able to invest in this home gym project that we're going to work on. We're going to convert the entire garage. We're going to knock, we're going to take the door off. We're gonna put up a wall, maybe put in some windows. It'll be dope. It'll be great. And but again, it's 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 not just about the selfishness in me that I need to have that. It's about progress. It's right. about growth. It's about learning. And like you said, if the girls want to come out there and learn healthy habits, progressive habits, mm -hmm. you know, generations are living a lot longer now because we have access to healthier food options. A fitter, a more fit lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle, and if I can pass these things down to them, without having to take them to a gym, where, again, you don't know who's using the equipment, time is money. How long are you going to be at the gym trying to teach the kids how to do it? Doing it out of the convenience of our own home is going to be the, the absolute best. Like that's going to be my favorite. So. Um, that's just some some of the updates on the house and some of the progress that we're making on the house, but I'm excited. I'm really excited to get the project to get the house going because I never ever ever thought I'd move back to St. Petersburg. But 2021 has really changed my thoughts on a lot of things, and I do. I love St. Petersburg. I love Florida. I love where I grew up. I love the people I grew up with. Even if I didn't love them then like i love them now well, i mean like that's also something else that's been big this week so your middle school yeah reunion which yeah I think is kind of cool it's the craziest weirdest but coolest thing in the world um and I, yeah i'll talk about it right now i guess that's cool it's progress right because have you ever heard of a middle school doing a reunion no no you didn't you haven't until now Everybody does their, you know, 10-year high school reunion, 15-year, 20-year, so on and so forth. Um, I'm, go ahead and shout out uh, my boy Tamarcus and my girl Vikayla reached out to me via this group that they created on Facebook about a, our Bay Point Middle School over in St. Petersburg, Florida. And we're going to have a 21-year reunion in 2021 because we left the 8th grade in 2000. 
And I've not talked to some of these people in 20 years. Had no clue that some of these people were doing such great things. And this is successful people. You also just have, and it, not to sound negative, but just like people, like regular people that just are living their lives and want to connect and, you know. And, and that's the great thing is like, I think back to when I was in middle school, I think back to when I was in high school and I, I talked to my brother a lot about this and I confidently think I really enjoyed middle school more than I enjoyed high school because of that stress that you're putting on yourself all the time that, oh, well, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta get in with this crowd, you know, high school sports, high school sports turns into, oh, well, what colleges are you talking to? And if you're not talking to any colleges, maybe you're not very good. And, oh, well, you're not talking to this D1 school. I'm getting letters every week from that D1 school. And there's just so much stress that's involved in high school where I feel like I was really just very laid back and chill in middle school and I got to just have fun and crack jokes and be myself. And honestly, I was really skeptical at first. I did not know that I wanted to really be a part of the group. So I was kind of quiet, not very active. I would watch, but I wouldn't engage. Mm -hmm. But more people started getting at it and I was like, oh, I know them, I know her, I know him. I remember this moment, I remember this activity. And that here's the thing that really hooked me. Every single post that somebody would put up, like a then versus now photo, mm -hmm. or just, hey, here's what I'm doing. Everybody is just gassing each other up. And you can tell it's genuine. It's like, these people have grown so much. And I, I hope that I've grown that much in the last 20 years, but like you're seeing pictures of when these kids were literal kids in the eighth grade. We all thought we were grown. I swear we thought we were grown. Looking back, man, we were just dumb kids pretending. But the people that we have grown into truly care about these other people. And it's like every every girl that puts up a photo, it's like, so many other girls are chiming in like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. You've grown so much. And I wish the whole world Wouldn't could that see that. Like there's so much positivity and there's so much want for reconnection that it's, it's, I, I, I went ahead and bought my tickets already. Like I'm, I'm excited to go. I'm excited to catch up. And I, I totally forgot how many people I went to middle school with that actually lived in my neighborhood and like so many people have commented and said hey I, I was just in the old neighborhood I was by your your old house not too long ago and I'm like funny you say that it's still mine I just <laughs> bought it but you know life is a very crazy place but again it's only as crazy as you allow it to be it's only as crazy as you make it because there are people out there doing wonderful things in this world, but we don't stop to pay attention. We're so caught up in ourselves. Yeah, but I also think something else you said. So you also, like, we are our own worst critics. Yeah. Like, just hearing you talk about it and, like, seeing the interactions that you're having. Like, I'm sitting here reflecting on, like, my middle school experience, my high school experience. And I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure I was hated. Like, I don't even know, like, and, and, and I don't know, like, I don't need that validation if I was or if I wasn't, um, you know, like, I've come to terms with who I am to a degree, yeah. uh, but I, I think, though, regardless of who you were, you, you were kids, we all were kids, right, and mm -hmm. if you're not making that progress and growing and being able to look back on yourself and be like, wow, that's embarrassing, or wow, you know, I'm really glad that I've matured and I no longer think that or I no longer do that, then you're not growing enough. You're not challenging yourself enough. And that was something that I think you kind of like were alluding to is just kind of like how you can look back on that and be like, you know what, we were kids. And even though some of that mm -hmm. was silly or stupid, we've also grown up and we can all look at that and maybe laugh or chuckle or say, that was a style or outfit I probably shouldn't have ever worn. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, I think you're referring to a conversation I had with one of my lifelong friends uh, earlier today, actually, Billy. Um, I've known him since elementary school. Uh, I will always know him for as long as we live. There is a very few amount of people that I will literally 
go to the ends of the earth for, and he is one of them. Um, whether we see each other once a, a week, once every six months, once every ten years, there will always be a connection. We won't let it go that long again. Right. There will always be a connection there that tone that me and Billy will be lifelong friends forever. Um, but what I told him was, if you can't look back at yourself a few years ago and cringe at the way you behaved, at the way you spoke, at the way you dressed, at the way you acted, then you haven't grown enough to yeah. realize that what you did just a few years ago or 20 years ago was just absolutely cringy. Cringe, but then you also have to forgive yourself because I think that's the other thing. Lots of people get stuck and they dwell on that negative of, oh, but that doesn't define you. Look. Like that totally does not define who you are now. A hundred percent. And, you know, I wish I had enough time to sit here and just read through some of the comments that I've gotten, but I was fat. I had a horrible haircut. My teeth were crooked. I was probably one of the least attractive people in the entire school, but I was fun. I was funny. I was pretty decent at basketball, you know, shout out Bay Point Falcons. We went nine and one that year, tied for the conference championship. <laughs> one of my big highlights. <laughs> um, you should flash your now and then photo. No, no, we're gonna keep that. <laughs> You're gonna have to follow my Instagram for that. At, <laughs> underscore storm underscore thomas it's going to be in the link below um but i've grown so much in 20 years and people were people couldn't believe how much i had grown and what i couldn't believe is how much i did have an effect on people like so many people commented and said oh, i remember having so much fun you were always funny in class you were one of the the funniest people i knew and i didn't realize that many people even remembered me like, I figured I was very easily forgettable, but that's the thing is, you can't dwell on that negativity. You can't wonder about those times. I guarantee you weren't as hated as you think you were, just like I wasn't as forgotten as I thought I would be. So, in the spirit of not dwelling, you know, mm -hmm. not saying, oh, if you could go back and tell your middle school self something, if there's one thing you could impress upon our daughters before they go into middle school, Mm -hmm. what would that be? Funny thing, somebody said that in a group today. They were like, if you could go back and tell your middle school self one thing, what would it be? And here's exactly what I said. Do not wait to chase your dreams. That's a good one. And it goes back to something I said earlier. I would love to sit here and say, I wish I could have started wrestling sooner, but it wasn't presented to me. But that's not the only dream I've ever chased. No. And I've got more tricks up my sleeve. I've got more dreams. I have a backup plan for my backup plans. And that's exactly what this video is all about. Making progress, striving to be better every single day and never taking no for an answer. I'm never gonna be perfect. You're never gonna be perfect. We're never gonna be perfect, but we can still make improvements every single day. I think I'd probably try to make sure they understand to love themselves. Yes, self-worth, self-love, <coughs> but also loving others. Kindness matters. It is... I don't want to get emotional. It is nice to be important. Hold on to that thought. There are people who reach out to me on a daily weekly basis to tell me how much they miss seeing me wrestle in their city, in their state. There are people who have reached out to me just about, you know, this middle school reunion. And it is so cool to feel that love and to feel wanted and to feel important. It is nice to feel important. It is important to be nice. The reason that all those people have reached out to me is because I was nice. And again, it's because I was so bullied in my younger years in elementary school, in middle school for the way I looked, for the way I dressed. 
I'm sorry to myself 25 years ago for the way I dressed. I listened to my mother. I should have never listened to my mother about my clothes. She's getting more heat in this episode than she did in the previous ones about but, keeping me out of the house. <laughs> but be nice. Be kind. Again, don't waste your emotional currency on your negativities. Love yourself. Love the person sitting next to you. Love the person across the hall. If you can hold the door open for somebody, do it. If you can just ask a stranger, how was your day? Start a conversation on the bus. Take your AirPods out for a moment. Have a conversation in an Uber on an elevator. Kindness matters. I think, I think also though, you've always been genuine. I, I don't have and, it in me to be fake. I well, don't have it in me to, to try to pull one over on anybody. And that's, that's very true. And, and there's a lot of people that they know me. Um, but I, I'm, it's cheeks. Why is this so hard? Um, cause you're being vulnerable. It's terrible to be vulnerable. Very vulnerable. Um, but no, I, I was never raised to be like that. To be truly genuine with those outside of like the, the, the family unit, like the tight knit family unit. And so over the years, I've damaged a lot of friendships and relationships being middle school, high school, college, adulthood, because to a degree I've been fake. And that's something else that is like, wow, I really need to work on that. Like there's people who are like, oh my gosh, we're such good friends. And I'm like, I don't know your kids' names. And that really hurts to reflect on it so that's something else like you have to be genuinely kind i th i think the problem is and I'm, i don't want to step on any toes or overstep my lines here but i think you were very much brought up to try to portray the best version of yourself in a, a given scenario whether it was at school you were supposed to play this role at school and when you were at church you were supposed to play this role at church and when you were at work you were supposed to be this role at work and when you're trying to be everything to everyone right you're trying to be different here and you're trying to be a little bit different here and you're trying to fit this mold here it's hard to even know who you are oh yeah i've told genuinely you, i've told you this before like um runaway bride Right. Like, I hadn't seen that movie until a few years ago. Good movie. It's okay. But I was like, you know, I'm totally that person who I never knew what kind of eggs I really liked um, until recently where I'm like, you know what? That's how I like my eggs. And because I would always just go with whatever was there. I was always, I'm a people pleaser. Right. But again, these are, to wrap it back around and maybe even wrap it up, <laughs> it's, progress it's growth it's development this may not make sense to you but to somebody it does to the world you may be one person to the world this may just be a podcast but to one person you might be the world mm -hmm. and to one person this podcast might be the world so maybe this is for you. Maybe this isn't for you. Either way, I urge you, I challenge you, I dare you to invest in you, to make progress for you. Just like I'm going to try to make progress for me, just like Jan's going to try to make progress for her, just like we're going to try to make progress for us as a couple and for our kids and be the change that we want to see in the future because that's progress hold doors say hello be kind all these things matter and it's only going to make the world a better place it's only going to make you a better person and at the end of the day when you put your head on your pillow you will have no regrets i can almost promise you that so with that thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of Withstanding the Storm. You know, I'm Storm Thomas, and this is Lady Jan. We're just two people.
trying to withstand the storm on a daily and weekly basis. We thank you for watching. We thank you for tuning in and subscribing. We love you, and we will see you again soon.